What's up, everybody? It's Brandon, and you're watching Glassworks YouTube channel again. Appreciate you for tuning in. Um, today's going to be something a little different. Maybe it might help some folks out there. Uh, it's not normally what we do, but try to do anything we can to help ourselves and help others. Um, so we got a Whirlpool washing machine, top load washing machine, no agitator, things like that. And the other day, it quit working right started saying lf which if you look up the model number look up the meaning on it online it means low flow and what it is is it either your um fuel your water pressure is low or your screens are clogged up or your water inlet valves have went bad now on ours i've cleaned the screens i'll show you where they're at I've checked the water pressure. It's good. Um, like I said, I cleaned the screens. And now I'm going to show you how to access your water inlet valve. So give me just one second, and I'll show you what we're working with. And you'll see what I mean. All right, this is uh, the Whirlpool we've got. Um, this is common with a lot of the Whirlpools, Maytag, and I believe Kenmore. Uh, and I will show you what you got to do um, before you get started of course first thing you want to do is you want to make sure the water is turned off and the power is disconnected you are going to lose a little bit of water but you know you get a mop or bucket put underneath the lines whatever so i'm going to get the water lines disconnected from this i'm gonna get it slid out and i'll show you what we got to do next give me just one minute all right now you got your washing machine now that you've got it where you can work on it, all right, there'll be a metal cover that sits back here on the back. Hang on just a second. I'll show you what it looks like. All right, see so that metal cover will sit on the back back here. You don't have to take all the screws out. I did. There's like five screws. One, two, three, and then four, five. All you need to do is take these top two out, and then you'll get... It works best if you use like a putty knife, something like that, like a long spatula putty knife. But you can use a screwdriver. And hang on, let me get to where I need to be, and I'll show you what, what you got to do next to get this top piece off. All right, when I took those screws out, sorry, when I took them screws out, I just took the, all of them out. But all, all you need to do is take the top two out. And I just used a six and a half millimeter socket. You take them out, and this will be sit flat you'll take a putty knife and you'll push up over here and there's a metal clip you gotta pop out hang on and i'll get it set where you can see it there's that metal clip right there and that metal clip right there and that tab right there will be down in those slots so you'll just have to uh, pop them clips out and then you'll just tilt up and pull it back towards you and it should pop right off now when you get this off you want to be careful with it because that is your control board right there what you want to do is this one wire right here slide that plastic clip back right there with the thumbnail and just pull up and you put this in a safe secure location now, i'm gonna put mine up real quick and i'll be right back all right, I got the parts put up. Now this is where your water comes in at. We got cold right here and hot right here, and I'll show you those filters. I've already messed mine up. See the cold and the hot? What you'll do is you'll grab one pair of pliers or a pick or something, and you'll pull them out, and there'll be little screens in there, which I'll show you better on the new part here in just one second. But what you want to do is some of these machines will have one, two, three valves. It won't have that fourth. This machine has four. Now you can order these parts. They range anywhere from like 75, 85 bucks. I think I kept finding $85 on like Sears Direct, Maytag. I got one off of uh, Amazon, like $30 shipped. So um, I'll put a link to that as well. But what you want to do is you want to, of course, make sure, again, no electricity. 
I'm gonna pop each one of these off. All the way across. Be careful not to pull on the wiring. If it gets stuck, just use a little flat blade screwdriver. And then you'll unhook the wiring right here. And then there is one more wire sensor on the bottom. You got this plug here, or I'm sorry, that screw here, that screw there, they're the same size, 6.5, or I think a quarter inch. Just pop those out like so. Don't lose it. If you're like me, you got a bad habit about dropping stuff and losing it. And then all you got to do is wiggle it and you'll feel it come loose. Now you'll have three rubber bushings. You want to make sure those bushings come out. And then there's the last plug right there. That one's a little bit more difficult to get out. See if I can get it one-handed. You just slide that black piece over and pull up. I may not be able to get it one-handed, so give me just one second. All right, what you'll want to do is you'll pull that tab back and then just pull that straight out. All right, now the old one's out of the way. Again, that's where the filters are. I'll see if I can pop them out real quick and show you what they look like inside. That's what it looks like inside. Of course, you'll want to make sure that these aren't got grit and dirt on them, things like that. And then that one will pull out as well. And then that looks just the same as the blue side now i messed mine up trying to pull it out they were wedged in there i couldn't grab it with pliers but it is what it is maybe you'll have better luck getting yours out than i did and you won't have to you know worry about those maybe that will be your only your only problem now it's more common it tends to be with people who are on well water which is what we are but we've got filters but it's still over time the deposits will build up in these and they'll eventually mess these sensor that sensor right there up so now i got this one out of the way got a brand new one here in the box looks just like it set it down make sure everything's the same hot hot cold cold three on the bottom four on the back and then basically all you got to do to install it is just like uninstall it. Set it down. Make sure it's in there good snug tight. Put your screws in. Put the wires in. And I'm going to get this put back together. Wash machine put back in place. And we're going to try it out. All right, now I've gotten it back this far. Um, don't do like I did and forget to hook up the bottom wire before you mount it. So make sure you have all your wires mounted in the right spot. And then, of course, um, I'm going to move it back where it belongs. I'm going to hook up the water drain line. I'm going to hook up the water fill lines. And I'm going to give it a quick test. I'm, of course, I'm going to put the top back on to give it a test real quick to make sure everything's going to work. And then we'll go from there. All right, everybody. I've got the water lines hooked back up. i got these extra little rams because we're on a well system. It helps build pressure. Um course before you put all that off if you take this back plate off you got to put that back on but be careful because that can be sharp cut myself there cut myself there just barely raised my hand across it um so now what i'm gonna do is uh turn these water lines on and check for leaks of course when you're hooking your lines back up to these you want to make sure that your rubber hose o-ring is in there and it's seated all the way back next to the hose that way it doesn't Get in there and get crooked or anything like that. Make a leak. <clears throat> so I'm going to reach back there and get that water on. And then I'm going to put the lid back on on the front. And we're going to test it out. All right. I uh, just did a little color cycle. Got a couple clothes in there. Not much. Just testing it out. And you really can't see it because of the reflection. But you can hear water's running. So that's pretty much it. After that, just snap that top back down. But, like I said, if you have any of the Whirlpools, Maytags, anything like that, uh, Whirlpool, Maytag, 
or I think Kenmore, you can get those parts. Now, let's pause this real quick. And if you're not sure what model you've got, I'll pause this real quick and I'll show you where to look for your model number. Raise your lid. And a lot of times it's just right there is your model number. You just take that number, model number in, you can go to Google, do a Google search of it, type in uh, the particular part, or you can go to like the searsdirect.com and you can look at all the different parts for that specific model, like I did. And then you can find the part number for that pump that I just replaced. You can take that part number in, do another Google search for it, for that specific part the ones that it's interchangeable for and like i said i found it on amazon for like 19 bucks plus tax shipping and everything like that it come up to be under 30 bucks compared to going to 